prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. An informed patriot is what we want. Welcome to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. Muscular Christianity. Where we relentlessly explore the intersection of truth and politics. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now, here's your host, Brian Fisher. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I am your congenial, convivial, and amiable host as always, Brian Fisher. Great to have you in the conversation today. Got a couple of guests coming up in this uh, next couple of segments. Senator Jason Rapert from uh, Arkansas will be on at 115 to talk about a bill that has actually passed the Arkansas Senate that defines, uh, divine, defines personhood from the moment of conception in their criminal code. We'll talk to him about that, and then Tim Comer of Jesus Books will be on at the bottom of the hour to talk about getting the Word of God into the hands of people that live in the United States of America in their own uh, language. So we'll be talking with him at the bottom of the hour. Now, before we get into some of those details, I want to turn our attention to the Word of God. I'm in the section, as you are aware, of Matthew's Gospel, where he is describing the events that led up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, to set the backstory for this story about Barabbas, you are familiar with the name Barabbas. He was a notorious prisoner. That's the how it's translated in the ESV, and that's a good way to translate. He was a notorious prisoner. Everybody knew about Barabbas. He was actually an insurrectionist. He was a, a rebel. He had engaged in armed insurrection against the, the Roman power. So everybody knew who Barabbas was. He was a known criminal, and he was in prison because he was a notorious criminal. And it was the custom at that time for the governor, as a gesture of goodwill to the Jewish people, to release a prisoner of the people's choice. He'd basically let them vote. It was on the prisoner that they would choose to have released. It was up for a popular vote. Now, Pilate had some great uneasiness about Jesus. He was basically doing what he did out of, out of fear. I mean, we see the same thing happening in Washington, D.C. today and in our politics all over the place where politicians, lawmakers, legislators, they know that what they are doing is not right. They know that it is wrong, but they are afraid of public reaction. They are afraid of the consequences. They are afraid of what the New York Times or the Washington Post or ABC TV might say about them and so they wilt, they collapse, they fold. And this was exactly the story with Pilate. He did what he did out of fear of the Jewish people. He was on thin ice with Caesar for some other reasons I don't have time to go into, but he had to be very, very careful about his public perception. He did not want any kind of unrest. Uh, he could see that a riot was brewing here if he didn't give the people what they wanted. And he tried to get himself off the hook by asking the people, who do you want me to release uh, to you. Do you want me to release Barabbas? In fact, there's some indication in some of the texts that Jesus was Barabbas' name. That was his name. It was Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Christ. Who do you want me to release you? Now, it's interesting to realize that Barabbas in Aramaic means son of Abba. And Abba, of course, as you and I both know, is Aramaic for father. So Barabbas was the son of a father, son of the father, that was his name. And there's a kind of an eloquent and poetic symmetry here that an unworthy son of the father was given his pardon, was given his release because the true son of the father was willing to suffer and die in his place. So the transaction that we see here is, is an eloquent and a poetic description of what has happened to you and me. We are unworthy sons of the Father. Every one of us is named Barabbas, an unworthy son of the Father. And the true and genuine and only begotten son of the Father died in our place that we might have our freedom. And so the people insist three times, three times they insist that Barabbas be released instead of Christ. In fact, I think Matthew is emphasizing the fact that the people insisted on this not once, not twice, but three times because of the Jewish principle that it is by the mouth of two or three witnesses that every fact 
is confirmed. So if the people were insisting not once, but three times, there is no question that this was their expressed will. In fact, at one point, they even say, let his blood be on us and our children. So the Jewish people called down upon themselves a curse which has not in its entirety been released even today. The Jews that crucified Jesus called down upon themselves a curse. Uh, his blood be on us and our children. They let Pilate off the hook. He made the big deal out of washing his hands in front of everybody, said, I am innocent of the blood of this man. He knew he was sending an innocent man to the gallows, to the cross, and he said, look, I'm innocent, and the Jewish people said, fine, we will take responsibility. We'll take the blame. We'll take all the culpability for crucifying the innocent Son of God. His blood be on us and our children. And again, as I suggested, that is a curse that is not going to be completely lifted until the Jewish people look on the one whom they have pierced in repentance, and then the curse will be released and God's full blessing can be released on the Jewish people. And so Pilate then hands Christ over to be uh, crucified the soldiers of the governor, Pilate's, these are the Roman soldiers, took him into the uh, governor's headquarters. They gathered the whole battalion. This is a cohort, 600 soldiers. They stripped Christ. They put on him a scarlet robe. This is just a soldier's cloak, an outer cloak that was purple. They twisted together a crown of thorns, which they pressed onto his head, and they put a reed in his right hand, a mock scepter, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. So they beat him about the head with the reed. Then they mocked, after they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, put back his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. And it's interesting, everywhere you go, and I think Matthew's doing this for a literary point, everywhere you go, Jesus is referred to as the King of the Jews, sometimes in sincerity, sometimes in mockery, but over and over again here at the end of his gospel, he gets various people on record saying that Jesus was the king of the Jews. That was even the, uh, the inscription that Pilate had put on the placard that hung above the cross. Well, let's go to prayer for ourselves and for our nation. Lord Jesus, I thank you for myself, for my wife and my children and their spouses, for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk for President Obama, for all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I thank you on behalf of all of us that you were willing to be crucified for us. Even though you were innocent, you were put to death for the guilty. Though you were righteous, you died for the unrighteous, the just for the unjust. You, the true Son of the Father, were willing to exchange your life so that I, an unworthy Son of the Father, might go free. You were flogged, stripped, mocked, spit on, struck on the head again and again for our sins. We worship you as the Christ and as the true King of the Jews. And not only are you the rightful King of the Jews, you are the rightful King of all men and all nations. We are struck as we read this account by the pettiness that led to the crucifixion of the Son of God. The Jews envied your popularity and success, and Pilate did not have the courage to do justice in the face of hostility. We know that many political leaders in our own day are driven by petty motives like ambition and envy and jealousy, and still others know the right thing to do but do not have the courage to do it. We pray that we will learn to select as leaders men of purity, integrity, honesty, courage, boldness, and principle that justice may be done in our land. Please purge us of envy. May we find contentment in you and in what we have so that we may be free of jealousy and bitterness over the success or possessions of others. And grant us the courage always to do the right thing. In your name I pray. Amen.